My House, My Castle is proudly brought to you by Godfrey Hurst Carpets. Godfrey Hurst Carpets, made in New Zealand, enjoy all over the world. on My House, My Castle. We look at the resolution process behind the leaky building fiasco. WHRS is not a resolution service. It's a circus. It's been an absolute waste of our money. It feels like you're being constantly kicked in the stomach. And there's no one to stop it. Our focus is solely around resolution. Follow one family's move from the corporate world to a tropical paradise. Ah! We sold everything we had. Our house, our cars. You know, everything. And more splash for your cash, designer kitchens and bathrooms. What I stand by is a Greenfields operation is up and running and delivering a product. And I believe that we, we are highly successful at it. The government needs to be aware that the system that they've set up is just not working. They can't patch it up, it won't go away. There are too many of us out there and we're all suffering. Since hitting the headlines in 2002, the leaky building syndrome has swept the country and rocked the building industry to its core. A rotten, systematic failure from dodgy buildings and design, to incompetent council inspections, to substandard products. Tonight, My House, My Castle takes a look at the government's solution to this enormous problem, the Weathertight Homes Resolution Service. In 2002, when the WHRS was set up, it was touted as speedy, user-friendly, an economic alternative to legal proceedings. Well, it's been more than two years since the service started, and we're keen to hear how leaky homeowners are finding the process. By the time WHRS was established in 2002, Dave and Angela had already spent three years seeking compensation for their house of horror to no avail. This rot here, coming right through, it goes right through the whole balustrade. You just don't expect to be able to pull your house apart with your own bare hands. I'm not that strong, but look, I can just, you know, you can just pull it apart. This part of the wall here and all the damage is caused by rain coming down or water coming down through the wall. That's what it does to jibboard. This completely deteriorates it and, you know, all this you can see is all tattered. Have a look under here. Now, this is stachybotrys. This has happened because the water's running down the wall. And that's what happens. It gets damp, it gets wet, stachybotrys forms, and then that's the, that's the danger. Estimations to fix their leaky home ranged from hundreds of thousands of dollars to a complete rebuild. And with an unsuccessful attempt to get the original builder to foot the bill, Dave and Angela saw the WHRS as an answer to their prayers. This was what was going to resolve our problems that we had been going through for the last three years. And that finally, uh, we would get the house that we, uh, we had bought in the first place. The process seemed simple enough. The Widdersons fitted the WHRS criteria. Their house was less than 10 years old and it was specifically suffering from water damage. Their house was assessed by a WHRS assessor and then the couple had the option of mediation at the cost of $200 or adjudication at $400. They chose the latter, believing they could avoid a lengthy court process and legal fees. But when they turned up to the preliminary hearing, Dave and Angela were in for a shock. Both the builder and the council that had signed off their home had brought their lawyers. They just basically started to chew us to bits with legal terms, legal terminology, uh, and um, at, at the end of the whole thing, uh, the adjudicator said, I'm going to adjourn this hearing, and he looked at us and said, I think you need to get legal representation. What? Dave and Angela are under the impression that they could navigate the service without the need for lawyers. We pose the question to the WHRS. We're a government service that is provided free of charge effectively until the homeowner chooses either mediation or adjudication. The maximum that they spend in our process is $400. Now, whether they choose to take that further and go into adjudication and then take on a lawyer and whatever else is required, that is ultimately their call. So it turns out the WHRS was just a starting point for compensation. 
So Dave and Angela hired a lawyer and waited patiently for a hearing. The Widdersons were in for another shock. Due to a backlog of claims at the WHRS, it took two years to be heard. And all the while, their house continued to disintegrate. When they finally got their hearing, Dave and Angela were awarded $181,000 compensation. But Dave and Angela were about to suffer yet another setback in the resolution process. Defendants can appeal the WHRS determination in their case. The Te Awamutu Council appealed the decision. And now, they're off to the High Court. We actually have no powers of enforcement. That, in fact, an adjudicator uh, publishes their determination. And if, in fact, parties decide to appeal that, they then embark on a separate process. Our focus is solely around resolution. But that's not quite how the Widdersons see the situation. It's been an absolute waste of our money. I, I don't know how long it would have taken us uh, from 2002 if we had a, approached the High Court. We would have probably been in and out by now uh, with, a, with an actual resolution. And the Widdersons aren't the only frustrated ones. Young homeowner Jay Banner never even got his case heard. The backlog at the WHRS kept him waiting for over a year, and by the time they did get to him, he was financially ruined. I had the WHRS service phone me two days before my house went for a mortgagee auction to tell me that they had finally appointed a assessor to come and have a look at my house. I was gutted at that point. It had taken so long for them to even appoint an assessor, and it was just too late. They used to send me letters which would just make you sick because they'd send a letter telling me how proud they were of themselves because I've now assessed X amount of homes, but they'd still be a thousand homes away from my own home, and I'm only house 1,051. During his year-long wait, Jay developed severe respiratory problems from the stachybotrys mould in his house. So he was forced to rent, as well as keep up with his mortgage. The financial pressure proved too much. And at just 22, Jay found himself bankrupt. When I filed for bankruptcy, that was probably one of the hardest moments of my life. My whole world had come crashing down around me, and I had a house that was worthless. And still more disgruntled users of the WHRS keep surfacing. <laughs> Dennis and Jane of Porirua are still reeling from their ordeal. WHRS is not a resolution service, it's a circus. A circus which has introduced a legal element into something which was supposed to be simple and accessible and economical. And no wonder emotions are running high after spending $60,000 in legal fees to go through the service. Both the developer and the council appealed the WHRS determination. So, like the Widdersons, Dennis and Jane found themselves in the court system they had tried to avoid. We just can't afford not to stop and we can't afford to carry on. It's, it's a dilemma that, that's really frightening. Um, Pensioners can't afford to have legal people represent them. Um, so we just wonder what we'll sell next. And still, the list of baffled WHRS users continues to grow. The Putmans are frustrated with the lack of legal bite the WHRS determinations seem to have. Two of the three parties found liable for their leaky home went bust. Rather than coming out empty-handed, they had to cut a deal with the third. From the $107,000 we've been awarded, we've had a settlement of $40,000. Uh, from that, we've had to pay out approximately $30,000 in lawyers' fees. So that's left us with $10,000 basically to fix a $100,000 problem on the house. They've repaired the house, but having to carry the $100,000 it cost means they're now forced to sell up. Feels like you're being constantly kicked in the stomach and there's no one to stop it. I regret buying the house because I should have picked up that there were problems, so looking at Catherine and what she's going through uh, is being bloody hard on me. There's not a day or a minute that goes by you don't think that uh, we should have walked away when we had the chance to walk away and not buy it. That we all feel to blame for this. Mm. It's not just, um, you know, I feel to blame because I pressured them into buying this house. So it's, yeah. We both feel to blame. 
It seems blame, too, is at the crux of the problem with the resolution process. With so many parties potentially liable in the leaky building fiasco, builders, architects, inspectors, manufacturers and councils, everyone is ducking for cover. This leads many frustrated users of the WHRS into the very court system they were supposed to avoid. So, where to from here? The WHRS currently has 2,009 active claims, which is a massive, complicated task for any resolution service to work through quickly. For some homeowners, the process is proving too difficult to navigate, both on a financial and emotional level. One thing's for certain, the fallout from New Zealand's leaky building disaster isn't going to be resolved any time soon. Coming up, one family's brave move from NZ to Fiji. If we hadn't gone ahead with a dream, how would you know if, if, it, if it was right for you? And we take a dip into high-end kitchens and bathrooms. Welcome back to My House, My Castle. This week, we're venturing to glorious Fiji to meet a brave family determined to swap the corporate world for a more relaxed lifestyle. from Tongapara in New Zealand and we bought a water sports company at Beachcomber Island in Fiji. We have three children, twin sons, Harrison and Taylor, who are 12, and Estelle, who is 7. The company is called Subsurface Fiji and it specialises in diving and water sports. It's a lot of fun, keeps us busy, great place to live. very different to what we had in New Zealand. This is my office. This is the powerhouse of the company. I know it seems little, but I know it's in a kitchen. I would personally like to have the one that Tony has, which is the big office, which he just runs a few boats from. I, in fact, run a multi-million dollar company from here. You keep telling me you don't need an <laughs> office. You can run the I, company from anywhere. And that is true. We can move with it, but I was saying that I would like it all, uh, you know, like it deserves. <laughs> corporate stuff. Corporate. <laughs> Yeah, it's hardly corporate, but we had a totally different lifestyle in New Zealand. I was an aircraft engineer and Karen was a real estate agent, and uh, we decided to sell everything up and uh, do something completely different here in Fiji. We sold everything we had, our house, our cars, everything, cashed in the superannuation, the whole thing. So we, we definitely put, put everything on the line. It didn't seem like too much of a huge risk to me. I, I felt it was a bigger risk if we didn't do it. That if we hadn't gone ahead with a dream, how would you know if, if, it, if it was right for you? And if you, you do need to take the risk sometimes to move forward. And knowing what I know now, it was the best thing we ever did. And here's my office. This is... Uh, Big, isn't it? <laughs> it's also Estelle's bedroom. So we multi-task with our rooms as well. This is my twins' room. It's a good thing that they're close to each other because they have to be in this space. But it's not as bad as it looks. They still have their plasma screen TV and they've got the Xbox. So they might complain that they're roughing it here on the island, but they're not really. They're doing OK. All right, come on to, uh, to the one remaining room of the house. Not much more to go. The workbench. <laughs> Tony! <laughs> The best thing about this room, and I don't think you can beat it, is this view. You lay in bed at night, but it's just... I mean, you can hear the lapping of the ocean. It's just beautiful. You can't have any regrets if you got this for your front yard. From, from my point of view, my life has changed a lot compared to New Zealand. I don't cook anymore, which is every woman's dream. I don't cook. I eat in the restaurant three meals a day. Uh, again, another change for me is, is teaching the children. I'm not a teacher, so I've learned to do that. Their school day is over much sooner. Uh, they often finish around 11.30, and their social studies is often on, out in the ocean when we go diving. My favourite thing about homeschool is it takes a lot less time and you don't get any homework. So you usually get to go dive enough. We finish our school. One of the good things about homeschool is you don't have to wear a uniform. 
can just wear whatever you want. You can turn up in it, basically anything. I miss my friends at school. And plus, I miss how I had breaks. You miss your breaks. <laughs> since I've come in here. When I first walked in here, I didn't know a BCD from a regulator. I think I'm getting it right now. But I've got some fantastic instructors. My lifestyle's changed hugely. I mean, I used to work night shift and day shift, like a four days on, four days off type of shift pattern. And I used to have to commute an hour each way to work. Now, I work seven days a week, but I don't really feel like I'm working half the time. You just rock downstairs. Plus, you put a skirt on to go to work. Yeah. You which just... the guys in the aircraft hangar wouldn't like that. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> different in that respect. <laughs> I think the hardest thing to leave behind in New Zealand is your friends and family. It's very hard and it's hard for the children because you're aware that they're not going to have a relationship with aunties and grandparents. But the good thing is we're only three hours away and that's not far and we certainly invite anyone to come up and stay with us. <laughs> there hasn't been a shortage of them at all. But to live on a tropical island in the middle of the Pacific running a water sports company, I can't think why I'd love to give that up. And it's nice putting on a Sulu as opposed to putting on a black suit to go to work when I used to with real estate. It is a global business and I run it in a bikini and no one used to know that. <laughs> Oh, life at Fiji is really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you need to go swim. <laughs> After the break, more panache for your pingers, the latest in kitchens and bathrooms.